say the next you know can't no VC will fund you oh what the how much money you need etc. But public spirited AI needs you to think about more than where we are and think about where we need. And India has done this multiple times, it leapfrog multiple times. Every time people thought we couldn't do it, we did. And we sometimes did it better than what people thought we ever could. I'm going to make the case for an Adbhud India, little AI fun there, right? And the argument goes like this. In India, there is demand. You know, India really needs AI. And think about it. Language, we've talked about it. A lot of us, like, uh, if you take a census, statistically I can tell you, even though we speak two, three languages on average, if two Indians randomly were to meet on the street, there's only a 34% chance they can even talk to each other, they speak a common language. So translation, the biggest tool we need here, continent in our country. Right? All our systems are not found, not working. Which are very likely said that when things are digitized, you can put AI on it. Right? A lot of things are not even digitized. But again, AI can digitize it can build that database, right, hopefully on the back, from which we can move ahead, right, and we can build for the application. So India needs AI more than the West and differently from the West. Number two, supply exists, right, A, because of you guys, right, some of the best applications in the West are being built by you here. We have, you know, most of you are very young, I don't know if you realize this, we are about the same population, roughly as a little bit more than Europe. Um, but their average is 44, India's average is 28, right? We have potential. We are hungry, ambitious country. And we're really coming into our own, aren't we, recently, right? On the global stage. And therefore, India is ready for AI. It's ready for that chance. We haven't had this kind of general purpose technology come in. Like Vishal was saying, a new revolution hasn't happened in a while. So this time is our chance, right? This is our Kapanam day, right? Um, and we have DPS. Right. I'm sorry, I'm promoting something that I've worked on. But I mean, it, it makes a difference when you have UPI, when you have UKYC, CBSD, IT, payment, uh, DigiDocker, right? Good infrastructure leads to good applications. That's what everybody said, right? At a country scale, it means different things. And this is something I want to talk about. This is a little different. The AI economy will be a transaction economy, not an attention economy. What do I mean? Yeah, it's expensive, frankly, at least right now. Even Google, with more money than the entire, more cash sitting in bank accounts than the entire GDP of many, many countries, charges you $20 a month to use Gemini Pro. Because it's expensive. When it's expensive, you won't have the same models of AI, of business models around AI, which is, come to my website, I'll show you guys. It's too expensive to even call you there and show you what you want, and then show you guys and recover money. If you look transactions, you need people willing to pay for AI. Now in India, we had this before. We said India will be low value, high quality. We have a lot of small transactions, right? So all I'm trying to make the case for is that India will use this new technology to achieve development outcomes. But it just doesn't happen on its own, right? Let's figure out how we do this. I want to talk about two things I don't know how much time we have. I'll tease them at least. And we have a booth outside where you can come talk to us. You can just come up uh, if you want to follow up on any of this. Now, from here on, I'm going to rapidly get into the market. Okay, so digital public intelligence, the new DPI, Digital Infrastructure Intelligence, with private innovation, applications built by folks like you, will make India the AI use case capital of the world. I am willing to stand by this. I'm going to take a bet with this. By 2030, the most AI used will be in India because of all the reasons I told you before. Now, India's AI overall strategy should be use case led, right? Remember, I showed you the data, computer models, that's how we talk about AI. But what data, what compute, what models is shaped by what use case? What are we trying to do? Clear use case definition helps with all those things inside. Turning challenges into opportunities, things that we thought we didn't have. But if you know what you're using it for, you can figure out what you do have, right? And there are ecosystem challenges at each layer, you know, the one big layer that it's a talent, right? You guys. That thing I think we have solved. But everything else we need to figure out, right? Um, and as we do plus AI, a not for profit, we are figuring out a bunch of this. Again, I'll, I'll talk to you about some of them today, not all of it. But the two biggest things we are doing 
is figuring out the use case and figuring out the infrastructure. So if you do use case there in deep enable, you get to a uniquely Indian model of AI. Um, and at people plus AI are not profit. We think that you know if we follow these four principles, the use case that we collaborate, nothing is happening alone. This is we're talking about transformation of a country. We need all of it, right? Build and share public goods. Who was talking about how he does open source? I don't know. So most of the things I'm able to do today is because somebody shipped code without thinking about what's in it for me. Right? And that idea taken to a larger context, what we call public goods, this is public goods. Right? Finally, do all of this to make sure you have a future by design. Right? Know what is it, know what you're building for, what's the larger goal here. Right? If we can all align on this, we can really make an algorithm. So what does people plus AI do? Four things, like I said, use cases, first of all, what are the population scale use cases for India? Number two, what infrastructure to run those use cases at scale? Third, we do a lot of collaboration, and, you know, we, we take specific problems like say healthcare, we define a few statements, call developers, build things for solving healthcare in India, we do this in various ways. Um, and finally, like anything, whenever we see a startup or something, one of you, just one single developer, build something amazing, we try to put it out there, celebrate that win, inspire more people, uh, put out articles, put out ideas on what India could do, uh, and we'll also hopefully be putting out something big next month. Um, but these are the four things we do, right? How do we do this? We do this entirely by volunteers. I have a very small team. But mostly that small team is dedicated to helping people like you, organizations like yours, and putting out stuff that can help India become other way. Now, like I said, two big things I want to tease. First is something we call Jalil Bath, like JKB for short. And then the idea. The idea is that listening to your users is a very hard task. And I'm sure all of you have thought about startup and you've got that advice. Go talk to your users. Right? You go to Python and what they say, go talk to your users, talk to your users. But the larger you get, the harder it is to talk to your users. It's true for a company, it's true for the government of India. Right? The government of India has to talk to an end citizen. There is somebody in Delhi who delegates somebody in the state office, state captain, who will call the uh, district officer, who will call the block officer, who will call the field agent. And then the field agent will say something and try to send it back all the way to Delhi. And of course that message makes no sense anymore. Right? But with AI, you can change that. We spoke about RAG. Think about this as a complement to RAG. In RAG, you have a few assumptions. Natalie, uh, no one's example. Knew what model she had, what was broken. She can <coughs> articulate that question, ask, you know, deal with that information. Not everybody in India is as privileged as us to be able to do that. Right? So, what's the model in India? What if instead of the human asking and the bot answering based on searching some knowledge base and hopefully not just making it? What if we flip that around? What if the bot asks a question, right? And the human answers. In this paradigm, you acknowledge that not all the answers can be digitized to say and then given to a bot to go over. Instead, the human has the knowledge. And if we can pick that knowledge from this human and that human and that human and this human, you can listen at scale. You can put that together into an insight. That insight is in this conversation bucket on which you can run your classic, you know, drag models, do whatever you need to do and understand what you need to understand, like the right? This flips the paradigm. It's not our engineering, it's JKB. Right? Um, and like Mon was saying, we're going to create an agentic world. We're going to be talking to our agents. And if you really think about it, if you really step back and think about big picture, everything you and I build, applications, UI, etc., is actually a proxy for the basic unit of human interaction, which is the conversation. Right? Right? You and I talk to each other and make problems. We decide to do something, we go out and we do it. You say it, it happens. In the age of AI, can we recreate that? At population scale, for everybody in India, in their own language. That is the idea of Janki Bar, right? Again, this is something that will launch a protocol around next month. I think this will be the next API, but I'm biased, right? You tell me. Alright, I want to move to the next thing that I want to tease, which is the open cloud compute, where I really want to first give a big round of applause to OCI for being big believers in this idea.